Pinterest is a place that people go to discover, to be inspired. And if you're the type of photographer that creates inspiring images, well, then it's kind of where you need to be. A lot of people think that Pinterest is only for mommy bloggers and DIY craft experts. However, it's incredibly misunderstood. 250 million people use the platform every single month to create mood boards and to curate ideas for their next photo shoot. For a lot of photographers, what's blocking them is that they don't understand how marketing on this channel could help them grow their business. The secret of Pinterest is that you're using images you've already created. It's only gonna take you a couple of hours a month once you set up your strategy. And that's what we're gonna teach you, how to market your business with the platform. First, we'll sit down with a commercial photographer. We'll show you how to take your existing content and show you how to connect it to your target market, to what they are looking for when they go on Pinterest. We will also sit down with an event photographer and talk to them about the successes that they've had on Pinterest over the last year. We'll define all the confusing terms. We'll talk about how to use a scheduling tool so that you don't have to be pinning every single day. Pinterest was made for photographers. It rewards imagery at its core for you to gain more visibility for your brand, more traffic to your website, to continue to grow and expand your presence. I encourage you to take advantage of the step-by-step -step process we put together for you. I'm Elizabeth Wiseman. Thank you so much for checking out my tutorial. I do a mix of things between commercial advertising and fashion editorial work, and somewhere in between, I do a lot of model testing. I started in this industry by working at a talent agency. I wasn't a photographer at the time, and I was watching photographers fail at getting what models and talent agencies needed. And so I asked my boss, can I pick up a camera and do this for you? I started doing photography for her, and the rest is history. We packed a ton of content into this tutorial. We're gonna start demystifying modeling agencies. We're gonna learn some language to use, how to contact them, the way they work, and you're gonna have that to use when you start to plan your model testing. And one of the things that you're gonna to need to do is align yourself with them as a peer. You're going to be open-minded in your language saying, I really think I can get a lot out of this, but I wanna provide things for you as well. Then we're gonna go through the creative side of things. I'm gonna go over the decisions I make with wardrobe and with hair and makeup and also with locations. When I'm thinking about the wardrobe, I say, who is this girl and where would she be? And then I match a location to that. We're gonna take all of that and move on to two shoots. You're gonna watch them from start to finish. There's gonna be an editorial one and a commercial one. I love how you're making it edgy, but instead of making it edgy, let's make it fun. Good, perfect, good. Yes, good. Good, good, good. Oh, I love that movement you're adding. Perfect. Good. And we're going to go through the decision-making process and how they're different and meet the needs of talent agencies. Having a really good understanding of what the agent wants for that particular model is gonna be really useful so that everyone's on the same page when it comes to the photography. And also, we're gonna cover retouching. We'll take two images, one from the commercial shoot, one from the editorial shoot, do the entire workflow and talk about how the industry standards for model testing apply because we're just barely gonna take some of these dark areas out by bringing in lightness instead of correcting them. And lastly, we're gonna take all of this information and I'm gonna show you how I built a business around model testing. So thank you so much again for watching my tutorial and I can't wait to see what you do with this information.
the most important part of a commercial model posing is energy and movement. So I think about them in real life situations. What do they look like when they're jumping? What do they look like when they're stepping? What do natural laughs do to the body and body language? And I try to capture that in a flattering way. I also want to think about facial beauty and the length of the body the same way I do in editorial testing. But if I don't have that element of personality and energy in there, I really missed out on an opportunity to please the agents and really surprise people with something they feel like elevates the shot. I want you to think about how you might naturally move. You're looking in a mirror, you're doing something fun with your friends, just that wiggle and that fidget, but it's all about your face. So big smiles, good. Perfect, good, perfect. Can you say hi out loud? Hi. hi. Cute. <laughs> really beautiful. Good. Good. Perfect. A couple with no teeth just to refresh it. Perfect. Good. I'm going to bring that shoulder more for that no teeth. Yeah, perfect. Chin down a little. Right there, it's going to feel a little tight, and you're going to pull this way. Right there, right there. Perfect. Good. Good. Give me a little eyebrow lift so it still stays kind of commercial and sweet, like this, like, hmm. Yes, good. It's like a little bit of cockiness almost because it feels confident. Turn your chin this way. Oh, you got it. Gorgeous. Perfect. Perfect. And then a big smile there. Good. Perfect. And I want to exaggerate this for one just so we get this fun energy. This is our, one of our only shots that's going to have a lot of color. Um, so I want to exaggerate the energy in some of them. So this like, yeah, just like let it, let it open up and be yes, perfect. Good, good, good. Perfect. Good. A little laugh if you can. Good. Good. Really nice. Okay, I'm going to back up to three quarter, but I am going to like recenter myself over here instead. I think I'm going to switch my lenses too. All right, so now that we're three quarter, I'm seeing your body. And this one is what I would consider maybe our most fun shot with the green colors. And like the monochromatic is still going to make it all about you, but I want to see just a little more bounce to the shots. We're going to get that action going. Let's do start with maybe some of those same things we did over there, but let's get a little bounce going. Yeah, perfect, good. Yes, good. Perfect, good, great. Let's do a hand on a hip. Good, that doesn't always work unless we have a lot of good movement. Perfect, good, good, good. Perfect, good. Good, hold right there. With the hand, anytime the hand's on the hips, let's keep you square. Yeah, instead of turning it, because if I lose that other arm, it's not my favorite. Perfect, good. Good, good, good. And then bounce just straight to the other side. Perfect, good, but keep, us, keep that elbow square to me. There we go, good. There we go, good, 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 good. Perfect, perfect, good. Perfect, keep the legs apart even a little bit more. Keep everything really square here and really let the bounce come from your hips. Perfect, good. Hand on the hip, good. And keep that elbow dead square to me. Perfect, love that, perfect, good. Love it. Gorgeous, good. All right, so now I'm gonna get you moving even a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna direct you as if it's a full body shot, but I'm gonna stay at the knees um, so that I can still see all the angles of the body. Um, so what I'm gonna do is have you pretend like you're taking a step, okay? So you're gonna come like this, and then you're gonna open up your body to me as you, as you come in here. So let's try it. Perfect, good. Yes, perfect, good. Good, perfect, good. Good. Does that have pockets? <gasps> Oh, and you know how much women love pockets and clothes. Let's go like that. That'll give you something to work with. Try not to let it pull too much. Perfect. Good. Good. Yes. Good. Try to make it more like a real, like a real step straight and then the open with just the chest, but keep the feet straight. Perfect. Good. Yes. Good. 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 Anytime we can kind of mix up your angles with upper body and lower body, we're going to get something dynamic. Take this step with this outside foot. So your foot that's closest to me. Perfect and then you're gonna spin it to me. Perfect, let's try that. Perfect. Yes, good. Good, and let's try the kicks again. This time, let's bend the knee with it so it's a little different. So you're gonna, when you come behind, it's gonna be more of a kick. When it comes here, it's gonna be a kick too. This is gonna be more natural and that's fine. So just let this react to it and you're gonna find something new. Perfect. Good. Good, good. Keep that hand under the chin, perfect. Good, good. Good, good. Don't, don't be afraid, when, especially when it goes back, to let it stay planted with this front foot and let that really become a ha, you know, something like that. Good, yes, good. Good, one more time. Really cute, perfect. Let's get you centered just a little bit better again. Can we try it with the other foot? It's probably not gonna be as natural, but we're gonna try it. Good, perfect, go for it. Good, and let's do the whole thing again, if you remember before where it goes back and then side and then forward. Perfect. Good. 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 You're killing it. Good. What else can we do that with our hands? Because I love those foot positions. I want to do that same foot position again, but with a different set of hands. Um, how about 
Yes, I love it. That's perfect with your hair. Perfect, good. Good, let's do the kicks. Good. Good, good. Cute. Good, I love it. Yes, it can be one hand, it can be both hands. Let's just keep it going with the hands in the hair though. Good, good. And it doesn't have to be perfect steps. Let's keep it, instead of moving both the feet with it though, let's keep it where one foot is doing the across and the over and the back and the across and the over and the back. That helps me stay centered. Perfect, good, good. Yes, yes, yes. Seems like a really weird structure, but it helps me get the best shots, but super quickly. Perfect, good, yes. Love it. Okay, I'm just gonna change it a little because I love all of those and I don't wanna keep repeating myself. So I love the hands and the hair. Let's keep doing that because that looks different in every shot. And then for a couple of these, you're gonna look away. Um, let's do some where you look just up in this corner and some where you look at that yellow stripe up there, okay? Let's go for it. Good. Yes, good. Good, I think it's a little too high. Let's bring your eye down just a little. Perfect, good. Yes, that's perfect. Good. 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 Really cute. I love all of these options. So let's pick one hand to put in here and really commit to it being feeling kind of like, wow, like super, super energetic. Like when that elbow hits there, it's, you know, you're almost dancing, you know, something that has a lot of energy. Okay, perfect. Good. Good. Yes, keep the feet going because that's moving your whole body. Good. Good. Try to keep the shoulders square to me. Good. Perfect, yes, good, perfect, good. All right, I'm gonna mix it up even more. I think sometimes I like to add even one more element. But sometimes it works, sometimes it does, and that's a little bit of a jump. Um, agents love it because clients love it, so everyone loves it on your team. Um, so I think what I like to try to do is don't overthink it. It's almost just like you're hopping over a puddle. Um, let's put the hands in the pockets, both of them. And you're gonna look right at camera, let your body go wherever it wants to go, and you're just gonna hop over the puddle and look at me. Let's try it. If you trip and fall, we'll all laugh in all the best ways. Good, I'm ready for you. Good. Good, love that. One more. Good, I was trying to catch that one later. I didn't miss it, I promise. One more, good. Good. Can we do it the other way, just for a difference, because I have awesome ones there already. Perfect, one more, good. Good. All right, I think I'm gonna try some sitting ones. So I don't wanna do the same things we did over there, because when we're building your portfolio, I really wanna make sure we have diversity. Mm -hmm. So when you sit down on a stool, oh, you know, culottes are kinda of cool to do those boyish sitting things, but I don't want it to be overly sexy or overly slouchy. I want it to be this like strong, playful shape. So let's see if we can pull it off. If not, then I'm gonna pull you to the side again and just do something a little different than we did over there. Perfect. Good, yeah, so come to the edge of it. Perfect. Good, um, yeah, and maybe, yes, that way it's a little more commercial, I love that. Good, let's do that leg out like far though, and then, but keep your hips kind of square. Yeah, there we go, cute, good, perfect. Love that, good, maybe even this hand can be on your hip or in the pocket. Perfect, good, perfect, perfect. Love that, good. Let me pop that elbow out just a little bit more. And then, yeah, oh, actually, I love what you just actually were thinking about doing. I want you to almost just look like you're being sassy with me. Perfect, good. Love it. Good. Good. Um, so what else would be different than what we did before? So let's go, I think anything straight on would feel different. Um, so let's tuck a foot underneath the other foot. Yeah, perfect. Good. Mm-hmm. Cute. Good. Um, I think I want your hands to go, let's do this again. That really worked. And then open up your hair with it so it feels like a different pose. Perfect, big laugh there. Good, really cute. Good, perfect. Great, perfect. I love that one, that one feels more natural. Perfect, wonderful, killing it. I wonder about maybe sitting on the ground. I might lower my light a little to get it down there. Brendan, just so that I don't knock it over, do you wanna come maybe um, lower my light for me? You don't want me to be knocking things onto you in the middle of a shoot. Good, thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a pretty shot. I love that you picked that. Might have to go a little, might have to go a little bit lower with it. 
You know what, actually I like the um, angle we're coming at from this, but it is more above, so I can't have your chin way down. But you know what, the, uh, the thing I like about that is it's gonna guide our posing a little bit, so you're just gonna like live in that. Your chin is up, you're basking in your light, and just use that as the structure of your pose. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, love that. Hold that, stay in that position. Let's find some options there. Big laugh there. So pretty. I'm just gonna change my crop, which will also change the shot. Perfect. Good, good. Yeah, if I come from up here, then I'm matching my light a little bit better. Perfect. Good. Perfect. Perfect. One more big laugh for me. Great. Oh, this shot's so cute. Um, just to have a different version, I've, even though I think that one's the winner, come this way with your legs. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Hannah, do you want to kill me? I'm putting, making a model wearing silk, like, roll around on the ground. Sorry. Photographers are not known for making stylist jobs easy. Perfect. Good. Perfect. Good. I think for that pose, it'd be better to roll over on your hip a little bit more. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. Let's see. All right, you look stunning. Perfect. Good. Maybe look out the window. Just feel like we caught you in the act. You're just hanging out. Everybody just hangs out in silk jumpsuits against green walls, right? Totally normal. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Good. Hold right there. I actually like what you were doing, but that hand did feel a little awkward. I saw you trying to like find it. Pull it just a little bit towards the ground. Yep. Perfect. Right there. Perfect. Good. Good. Perfect. Right there. Keep the position of your head this way, but then look at me. Perfect. Good. Little laugh there. That's stunning. Really, really nice. Good. All right, so I want to try something a little bit more funky. Um, yes, I love what you're doing intuitively, so bring that knee up even a little bit more. And this is going to be a little bit tight because you have high heels on, but I'm going to rotate you even more towards me with your chest. Yes, exactly. That arm can even like, yes, that can be kind of funny in the way that it's positioned. And just because I'm already on the ground, can you come in and fix something for me? Um, just where I have her twisted, the shirt is buckled a little bit right there. It may not be possible to fix perfectly, but if you could give me something a little smoother, I would take it. No, that does something funny to the side. So um, maybe I'll adjust the position instead. I'll adjust the position instead. That's fine. Yep. Cheyenne's finding it. That's fine. Let's go for that. I'm all about getting it in camera and not having to retouch it later. Um, perfect. It's still a tiny bit buckled. Can you just lift this shoulder up the tiniest bit? Yep. Perfect. Good. Love that. And then can you bring this hand to your head? Yes. Gorgeous. Good. Perfect. Good. Give me even more eyebrows. Really look into the camera. Perfect. Good. And then give me that reaction like, oh. yes, good. And then let's keep it commercial because that's mostly what's going to be your money makers. Perfect. Good. Love that. Stunning. Really good. Last two shots. Perfect. And then a big laugh there. Ha ha ha. Love it. All right. Really good. A commercial model is typically kind of girl next door, big smiles, really traditional beauty face. However, the point of a commercial model is to uh, help sell something. So people want to see a, um, an approachable beauty. Cheyenne, she has that. She has this bright, amazing smile, but she's interesting looking. I love her freckles. She has a little bit of gap in her teeth, and I love that. And I think that clients love that too. She's got great textured hair. I can totally see her on a rooftop for a Coca-Cola commercial, laughing along with her friends. I think that she's a really modern version of a commercial model, and I thought you might want to see that. She also is a little bit curvier, and I thought that was a nice contrast with Christine, who's our editorial model.
We already have our commercial shot pulled up in Photoshop. As you guys are gonna see, I don't do a lot of retouching. That's for two reasons. One is because I wanna make sure that I can do things quickly and efficiently. The other reason is because the agencies do want the images to represent the model well. And if you're over retouching, then they're gonna question whether the clients are gonna be confused. So we wanna make sure that the choices that we make are things that are just enhancing the natural beauty of the model. So let's go ahead and start. I have her pulled into Photoshop already. I did start in Camera Raw, and the only thing I did in Camera Raw was adjust the exposure down a tiny bit. The reason is is because with commercial headshots in studio, I pivot them towards my strobe, and sometimes that brings my exposure up just the tiniest bit, so I brought it down. Another reason to do that in her circumstances, she has these amazing freckles, and if I have my exposure up too high on her skin, then I'm gonna lose that detail. So I brought that down probably about a quarter of a stop, and then I'm gonna start from here. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a layer for some healing. All I'm gonna do is come in here and look for any blemishes, anything that's going to be drawing my attention. Yeah, perfect. I'm gonna create a healing brush that's just slightly larger than the spot that I'm looking to heal. I might be a little less detailed about this than someone who is a commercial retoucher. Uh, I'm gonna reiterate that it's because a lot of these images live on the web. It's also because of speed. So if I'm using this teeny, teeny, tiny brush and I'm going way, way, way deep in my zoom, then I'm gonna be seeing things that the clients aren't gonna see. The only other thing I might do is, this is gonna make my makeup artist upset, but I'm probably gonna lose a couple freckles up here by her under eyes so that when I come in here with a clone to get softness in the under eye area, I'm not bringing freckles up too. Perfect. Yeah, and that really brightens her face. You know, this is something that I do often. I might do a tiny bit of here as I bring in a dodge layer with a curve. Great, I'm gonna label that dodge so I know that it's not for contrast or something else. I'm going to mask it, and then I'm gonna grab my brush tool. And for a dodge layer, you know, you want something, a flow that's really, really low because we're just barely gonna take some of these dark areas out by bringing in lightness instead of correcting them. That's what I love about a dodge layer is because it's something that almost nobody's gonna see, but I'm just straightening the planes of her face, just the tiniest bit, creating some triangles under the eyes and some triangles over here and maybe straightening the line of the nose, but I'm doing it with light and I'm not actually, I think the line of her nose is gorgeous. I think the planes of her face are gorgeous. I'm just highlighting what's naturally there. So you can barely see when I turn it off and on, just softening that, just the tiniest bit. Okay, I think I would also like to enhance the green background. So I'm gonna bring up a hue saturation layer. I'm gonna zoom out just a little so I can see my shot better. Perfect, centering it. And then in my hue saturation, I'm gonna find my greens and see what this does. You know, sometimes they don't do exactly what you want them to do and you have to play with the yellows or the blues to really get the goal you want, but yeah, it's changing it just a little. It's adding a little bit of saturation to that dress and background. Turn it on and off. It's pretty subtle though. So I think maybe what to achieve my goals, I might actually go back to master and just turn my saturation up in general, just a tiny bit so that, yeah, that's gonna give me more of the effect that I want. Her hair is so vibrant and gorgeous and her skin's vibrant and gorgeous, I can handle that and I think it just adds a little bit of something. Okay, then this is something that I like to do that add some contrast instead of a traditional contrast layer is I'll add a black and white layer and then I will drop my reds and my yellows. I know that looks crazy. She has these gorgeous freckles and what I'm trying to do is bring them out. So if I just did contrast, it would be fine. It would be beautiful, but I might not emphasize the things I want to emphasize. It would probably just emphasize the line of her eyes or it would emphasize her hair. But doing this black and white layer and then I'm gonna drop my opacity and this is per taste. You know, like this is it up. This is at 53%. I come down to 9% and that starts to feel really good to me. I feel like I'm seeing pretty prominent freckles there and I'm not losing too much color. The other thing you wanna look for if you try this trick is to make sure that you're not adding too much detail to the skin that makes the skin look flawed. That's something we wanna avoid. Just enough to add the freckles in and I'm gonna turn it on and off so you can see. Just a little bit of drama. And since we bumped the saturation layer up, I don't even mind the amount of saturation that I lost in that. And then I would either do a contrast layer just to add a tiny bit more. That's bringing my brightness down a little, so I'm gonna bring my brightness right back up. 
And honestly, for an agency's purposes, that's enough right there. They would love to see that. The only other thing, if I was definitely going to put it on my website or spend an extra few minutes with it, is I might do a selective color layer, and this is going to be a way to drop some of the reds out of her chest. I pull my magentas down, pop my yellows up, pull my blacks down out of my red layer, and I know that that's really, really taking the saturation out of her face. But then I'm going to mask that layer, grab myself a brush with a low flow. Let's do that a little. And then I'm just going to take these areas that just feel like they're a slightly different tone than her face, and I'm going to mask it a little bit probably could bring my flow up a little because I was kind of conservative on my settings. I still think you're going to be able to see the difference. Hold on, let me check it. And by dropping the blacks, a lot of times those red spots are also places where you're hiding some shadows. And by dropping the blacks in that red layer, you're also getting a cool effect. So really, that's all I would do. And then I'm still seeing her natural beauty. I'm going to group these so you can see them turned on and off. So I can turn them on and off so you can see just the subtle differences here. I think the main things I noticed is the area under the eyes. I noticed that texture in the skin has changed and is really prominent with those freckles. And I think I also, my eye is drawn to something I didn't expect, which is that area between the eyes where I took a little bit of a shadow out is really bringing the attention to the symmetry in her face. And I think it's really beautiful. So as you can see, this process is fairly quick and simple. That's on purpose. I want to make sure that I'm spending my time wisely so that I have more time to give variety to the agencies. I also want to make sure I'm staying true to the natural beauty of the model. This is something that I then would take and export as a JPEG and send directly to the agencies in the models. We have covered so much. We started talking about talent agencies and how you can collaborate with them. Then you got to watch two distinct photo shoots, an editorial and a commercial. What I loved about that is we saw what was the same as well as what was different. Then we looked at the selects, narrowed down from hundreds of photos from each of the models, and we retouched two of them. Finally, we went through the business of model testing. It's the business model that I use, but it's also broad enough so that you could apply it to either monetizing model testing in your size market or potentially creating a new path for fashion photography. In addition to all of this information, I'm including select raw files so you can follow along on the retouch, a PDF posing guide that you can then apply to any kind of photography, but especially model testing, an email template that you can then reach out to talent agencies and ask them in an appropriate tone and language for the opportunity to test with models. And finally, I'm giving you a homework assignment, one raw file that could go either commercial or editorial. It's also an opportunity for you to add a little personal style to this because even though we were formulaic and had structure, there's a lot of room for you to add your stamp that's gonna make it uniquely yours. The last thing I want to do is encourage you to keep at it. Sometimes model testing can be frustrating and discouraging. You might get some no's. You might feel like there's weeks that go by before anyone returns an email. But these tools that we're using are not just about model testing. Sometimes there's even markets where the entire market has a policy where we don't pay photographers for testing. There's still opportunity here. You're going to be learning things that are going to broaden your portfolio and broaden your options for your entire career. I know that you're going to take all this information and push it towards something that you've never been able to achieve before. You're going to be more creative. You're going to feel clearer about your decision making and your portfolio is going to reflect it and your career is going to be better for it. Red, red,
that dumb habit. Pinterest is a place that people go to discover, to be inspired. And if you're the type of photographer that creates inspiring images, well, then it's kind of where you need to be. A lot of people think that Pinterest is only for mommy bloggers and DIY craft experts. However, it's incredibly misunderstood. 250 million people use the platform every single month to create mood boards and to curate ideas for their next photo shoot. For a lot of photographers, what's blocking them is that they don't understand how marketing on this channel could help them grow their business. The secret of Pinterest is that you're using images you've already created. It's only gonna take you a couple of hours a month once you set up your strategy. And that's what we're gonna teach you, how to market your business with the platform. First, we'll sit down with a commercial photographer. We'll show you how to take your existing content and show you how to connect it to your target market, to what they are looking for when they go on Pinterest. We will also sit down with an event photographer and talk to them about the successes that they've had on Pinterest over the last year. We'll define all the confusing terms. We'll talk about how to use a scheduling tool so that you don't have to be pinning every single day. Pinterest was made for photographers. It rewards imagery at its core for you to gain more visibility for your brand, more traffic to your website, to continue to grow and expand your presence. I encourage you to take advantage of the step-by-step -step process we put together for you.